हॅलो एव्हरीवन माय नेम इज खुशाल इंगळे अँड टुडे वी विल लर्न वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दी न्यूरो ट्रान्समिटर्स सो फ्रेंड्स ॲज वी नो दॅट वाईल लर्निंग अबाउट दी न्यूरो ट्रान्समिटर्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शूड नो दी सम बेसिक पार्ट्स ऑफ दी न्यूरॉन्स सो हिअर वी विल जस्ट रिवाइज विद इन फ्यू मिनिट्स दॅट what is meant by the neuron and which part uh, it pairs so one by one this one that is this one is the dendrite then this one is the soma or it is also called as the cell body this one is the nucleus it is axon and this is the axon terminal so when any neuron receives any signal through the dendrites so it will generate the action potential within itself and this action potential means uh, i can say that it is nothing but it is the electrical signal so this electrical signal is passed through the axon and reach up to the terminal part of this axon so this one is the axon terminal and finally it releases certain chemical or certain compounds these are called as the neurotransmitter so in today's lecture we have to learn about the different types of the neurotransmitter so actually what happens these neurotransmitter when they are released by any certain neuron it will released into a particular gap or the cleft which is present in between the next neuron so this is the other other neuron so in between this neuron and this neuron there is a narrow space or a gap this is called as the synapse so this one is the what this is the synapse or more often it is called as the synaptic cleft so within this synaptic cleft there is a neuro there are neurotransmitters or that neurotransmitter is released within this space and it will activate the next neuron so as you compare in between these two neuron so this one is the synapse or synaptic cleft so this part or this neuron is called as the presynaptic neuron pre means before so this one is the neuron which is present before the synapse that's why this neuron will be called as the presynaptic neuron and this neuron or successive neuron is called as the post synaptic neuron so post means after so i hope that you will come to know the difference between the pre synaptic neuron and post synaptic neuron now see here in this other diagram this one is the pre synaptic neuron this one is the synaptic cleft where the neurotransmitters are released by the presynaptic neuron and then this neurotransmitter will activate the other or next successive neuron that is called as the post synaptic neuron this post synaptic neuron will again activate the other or next consecutive neuron that will be again called as the post synaptic neuron so in this way that signal will be carried out into the successive neurons now finally we will get the output signal and this signal will be released or carried out up to the muscles so how this neurotransmitter will work here we will see one by one but before that these are the signal means presynaptic neuron will be activated by these some signals so that signal may be the any sound that signal may be the any color it may be the smell it may be taste or it may be the touch or because of that temperature also so these are the different types of the neurons which are present in our different sensitive or sensory organs in this way finally after activation this neuron will generate the output signal that signal will be taken up by the either central nervous system or the spinal cord so here what happens at the terminal end of the axon that see here that when that nerve impulse will be carried out up to the terminal part of the neuron 
here already that terminal part is filled with some pouch or the vesicles which are already filled with the neurotransmitters so you can see here that these are the synaptic vesicles and these vesicles are filled with some neurotransmitters so upon activation of this neuron this neuron or this neuron will release the neurotransmitter so this one is the narrow gap or the cleft in between the neuron in between the two neuron so this is the synaptic cleft so in between this cleft these neurotransmitters are released now when this neurotransmitter will bind with their transporter or the receptors here for example here this is the neurotransmitter receptor and this one actually is the ligand gated channel which is actually the closed condition so this where the this ligand gated channel were closed when there was no any neurotransmitter was present but after the release of this neurotransmitter within this synaptic cleft this neurotransmitter will bind with their receptors and after binding with the receptor they will carry out the conformational changes within this ligand gated channel and the channel will get open so because of that opening whatever the sodium ions are there this sodium ions will enter within that post synaptic neuron so this one that is ligand gated channel now it is in a open state and because of this entry of this sodium ions that it is responsible or it will generate the nerve impulse in that post synaptic neuron so in this way this signal will be carried out from one neuron to the other neuron it will be transmitted up to any muscle cell or the central nervous system now coming to the next point that about 100 different substances they are either known or suspected neurotransmitters so what does it mean that near about 100 different substances are known as a neurotransmitters neurotransmitters as we know that they bind to their receptors and they act quickly to open or either they close the ion channels in the plasma membrane of that neuron now this mechanism or this process will result in either process of excitation or inhibition of the post synaptic neuron so in previous slide we already seen we already discuss about this point that because of this opening or the closing of that ion channel it will either activate or inhibit the post synaptic neuron that's why on the basis of that neurotransmitter that mechanism of the opening or the closing of the ion channel they may be categorized either excitatory or the inhibitory in nature so many neurotransmitter are also hormones released into the blood stream by endocrine cells in organs throughout the body i repeat again that this many neurotransmitter are also hormones means many of the neurotransmitter they act as a hormone and these hormones released into the blood stream by endocrine gland or the cells in organs throughout the body now within the brain certain neurons these are called as the neurosecretory cells which will secrete these hormones neurotransmitters can be divided into the three major classes first one that is amino acids biogenic amines and neuropeptides so so one by one we will learn about all these three major classes of the neurotransmitters so first one that is small molecule neurotransmitters so under this category of the neurotransmitter it is already given here that these neurotransmitters are actually these are the small molecule so here first one that is amino acid for example glutamate aspartate glycine and gaba gaba stands for gamma amino butyric acid so these are the simple amino acid which act as a neurotransmitter and the other category is that biogenic amines for example acetylcholine dopamine norepinephrine serotonin nitric oxide atp and other purines they act as a neurotransmitters and collectively all these neurotransmitter are called as the biogenic amines 
coming to the next category of the neurotransmitter that is neuropeptides so this word itself talking about its meaning that neuropeptides means certainly it will contain the peptide so neurotransmitter which are consist of 3 to 40 amino acid and they linked by the peptide bond are called as the neuropeptides so actually this is the chain of a small or a short chain of the amino acids now how many long they are they are 3 to 40 amino acids only now under this category that is neuropeptides it includes endorphins enkephalins substance p angiotensin 2 cholecystokinin etc means certain again few uh, examples are there but majorityly these endorphin enkephalin substance p angiotensin 2 and cholecystokinins they comes under this category that is neuropeptide glutamate and aspartate they having the excitatory effects so both one this glutamate means glutamic acid and aspartic acid these simple amino acid act as a neurotransmitter and they have the or they shows the powerful excitatory effects whereas this gaba and glycine both these are the amino acid and they having the inhibitory activities gaba binds with the anotropic receptors and opens the chlorine channels gaba is found only in central nervous system where it is the most common inhibitory neurotransmitters so you should know that certain neurotransmitter or uh, some neurotransmitters are inhibitory neurotransmitter and some are excitatory neurotransmitter so this gaba is the common inhibitory neurotransmitter about one third of all brain synapses use gaba means whatever the synapses are present within the brain near about one third of the all brain synapses they use this neurotransmitter which one that is gaba about half of the inhibitory synapses in the spinal cord use glycine this is again the other amino acid and rest use the gaba so here in our brain that one third of the part of the brain use the gaba as a neurotransmitter and about half of the inhibitory synapses in where in spinal cord they use the glycine so these are the structures of the amino acid which act as a neurotransmitter so this one is the glutamate that is glutamic acid simply it loses here hydrogen that's why cooh acid group becomes the now coo negative so this one is the glutamate this one is the aspartate and this one is what this is this is the gaba and this one is the simply a simple amino acid that is glycine now coming to the other category of the neurotransmitter that is biogenic amine so here certain amino acids are modified they undergo the modification undergo the decarboxylation means carboxyl group is removed and they will produce the biogenic amines and these biogenic amines act as a neurotransmitter so what is the base of this biogenic amines that certain amino acids they undergo the modification those that are prevalent in nervous system include norepinephrine epinephrine dopamine and serotonin so in our central nervous system these neurotransmitter that is norepinephrine epinephrine dopamine and serotonin they act as a neurotransmitter and these are actually these are the special biogenic amine neurotransmitter most biogenic amines bind to metabotropic receptors there are many different types of metabotropic receptors for each biogenic amines means whatever we have learned here that is norepinephrine epinephrine dopamine and serotonin so most biogenic amines bind to metabotropic uh, receptors there are many different types of the metabotropic receptors for each biogenic amine now these biogenic amines may cause excitation or inhibition in previous slide we saw that there were some neurotransmitter were there which were came from the amino acid and these were inhibitory in nature but these biogenic amines may cause either excitation or inhibition depending on the type of metabotropic receptor at the synapse 
under this category first one that is acetylcholine so this acetylcholine is the best studied neurotransmitter it it is released by many peripheral nervous system neurons and by some or central nervous system neurons acetylcholine is an excitatory neurotransmitter it is also an inhibitory neurotransmitter at some synapse so this neurotransmitter act in both way either it may be the excitatory in nature or inhibitory in nature see here that this one is the axon terminal of a particular neuron this one is the means this is the presynaptic cell this one is the post synaptic cell in between these there is a gap that is called as the synaptic cleft where these neurotransmitters are released particularly here that neurotransmitter molecule example is acetylcholine this acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft so after the release from that presynaptic cell this acetylcholine will bind with their receptors and it will activate the post synaptic cell but we know that this neurotransmitter should not be present for a maximum time or should not be present for a longer time so that very soon or quickly this neurotransmitter should be destroyed or degraded for that there is one enzyme that is called as the acetylcholine esterase it will inactivate the acetylcholine molecule by splitting it into the acetate and choline fragments so very soon after the release the ex enzyme that is called as the acetylcholine esterase it will split this acetylcholine molecule and it will degrade this now coming to the other category of the neurotransmitter that is called as the catecholamines so under this catecholamines norepinephrine dopamine and epinephrine they are included so all these act as a neurotransmitter so catecholamines include amino group that is nh2 and catechol ring which is composed of six carbons and two adjacent hydroxyl groups now catecholamines are synthesized from the amino acid that is tyrosine inactivation of catecholamines occurs via reuptake into synaptic end bulbs so in the same way that we learn in previous slide that there is no any mechanism through which the degradation of this catecholamines occurs simply the inactivation of this catecholamines occurs via reuptake by the synaptic end bulbs means neuron will absorb this uh, catecholamines in this way their quantity will be decreased then they are either recycled back into the synaptic vesicles or they are destroyed by the certain enzymes the two enzymes that break down catecholamines are catechol o methyl transferase that is comt and monoamine oxidase that is mao so these are the enzymes which break down these catecholamines now coming to the next category that is norepinephrine so norepinephrine plays role in arousal that is awakening from deep sleep dreaming and regulating mood so all these activity will be controlled by this neurotransmitter that is norepinephrine a smaller number of neurons in brain use this epinephrine as a neurotransmitter both epinephrine and norepinephrine also serve as a hormone because frequently we learn about these two hormones uh, while learning the adrenal gland also so here we know that these two hormones that is norepinephrine and epinephrine they play a very important role and they are released by the adrenal gland also cells of the adrenal medulla releases them into the blood where they act as a hormone as well as neurotransmitter also coming to the next one that is serotonin it is also called as the 5 hydroxy tryptamine serotonin is concentrated in neurons in a part of the brain called as the raf nucleus it is thought to be involved in sensory perception temperature regulation control of mood appetite and induction of sleep so this serotonin acts as a neurotransmitter and it is involved in these various activities these are the some biogenic amines that we have learned in previous slide so this one is the structure of norepinephrine 
then epinephrine dopamine and serotonin if you see carefully here there is one common structure found in between this structure that is uh, all they are made from the amino acid that is tyrosine now coming to the next neurotransmitter that is atp and the other purines we know that the atp molecule contains the ring structure so ring structure of adenosine portion of atp contains the what purine ring adenosine itself as well as its triphosphate diphosphate and monophosphate derivatives is an excitatory neurotransmitter in both central nervous system and peripheral nervous system now most of the synaptic vesicles that contain atp also contain other neurotransmitter in pns means peripheral nervous system atp and norepinephrine are released together from some synaptic neurons some parasympathetic neurons release atp and acetylcholine in the same vesicles so more or less that the atp and other purines they also act as what as a neurotransmitter so all of you you are well known with this structure so this one is the structure of atp which contains this pain to sugar and this one is the purine ring and these are the three phosphate molecules so whole structure act as a neurotransmitter <laughs> so coming to the next neurotransmitter that is nitric oxide so i can put this neurotransmitter in other category because actually this is the neurotransmitter which is present in a gaseous form here this gas that is nitric oxide which is a simple gas and it is an important neurotransmitter that has widespread effect throughout the body this nitric oxide contains a single nitrogen atom and is highly reactive free radical so enzyme that is nitric oxide synthase or nos this nitric oxide synthase catalyzes the formation of nitric oxide from the amino acid arginine so this nitric oxide means this neurotransmitter that is nitric oxide is synthesized from what from the amino acid that is arginine with the help of this enzyme that is nitric oxide synthase this nitric oxide is not synthesized in advance and packaged into the synaptic vesicles so in previous slide we learned that many of the times the neurotransmitters they are already produced they are synthesized and they are packaged into the synaptic vesicles means pouch like structure and upon their necessary and upon their requirement these vesicle will release their neurotransmitter within the synaptic cleft but this nitric oxide is not synthesized in advance rather it is formed on a demand and act as and act immediately it exists for less than 10 seconds before it combine with oxygen and water to form the inactive nitrates and nitrites so on the demand this nitric oxide will be synthesized and it will exist less than 10 second because after the formation this nitric oxide will combine with oxygen and water to form the its inactive nitrate and nitrite form that nitric oxide is lipid soluble and diffuses from cells that produce it into neighboring cell so nitric oxide upon the formation actually it is a lipid soluble molecule and it will diffuse into the neighboring cells it will activate an enzyme for production of secondary messenger called as the cyclic gmp so cyclic amp cyclic gmp all these are the secondary messenger so after the formation it will activate an enzyme which will produce the what secondary messenger that is cyclic gmp some research suggests that nitric oxide plays a role in memory and learning also endothelial cells in blood vessel walls release nitric oxide which diffuses into neighboring smooth muscle cells and causes what causes the relaxation in larger quantities nitric oxide is highly toxic 
phagocytic cells such as macrophages and certain WBCs, that is white blood cells, produce nitric oxide to kill the microbes and tumor cells also. Now, next one that is neuropeptides. So, neurotransmitters which consist of 3 to 40 amino acids linked by peptide bond called as the neuropeptides. So, these are the short stretches of the peptides or the short chain of the amino acid known as the peptide molecule and this peptide act as a neurotransmitter that's why these are called as the neuropeptides. They are numerous and widespread in both central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Neuropeptides bind to metabotropic receptors and have excitatory or inhibitory action. So, they act in a both way. This one that is neuropeptides either they may have the excitatory or inhibitory nature. Neuropeptides are formed in neuron cell body, packaged into vesicles and transported to axon terminals. Besides their role as neurotransmitters, many neuropeptides serve as hormones that regulate the physiological responses elsewhere in the body. So, this one is the short chain of the neuropeptide. So, these are the amino acid that is arginine, proline, lysine, proline, glycine in this way. So, this is the short chain of amino acid and this acts as a neuropeptide. This structure, nothing but it is the substance P. So, this is the neurotransmitter. <laughs> now, coming to the next category of the neurotransmitter that is enkephalins and endorphins. So, certain brain neurons have the receptors, means particularly the plasma membrane of the neuron, they having receptors for opiate drugs such as the morphine and heroin. So, as we know that morphine and heroin, these are the drugs. So, for these drugs, certain neurons in the brain, they having the receptors. Enkephalin endorphin contains the chain of five amino acids. So, enkephalin and endorphins, actually they contain the chain of only five amino acids. Their potent analgesic, that is pain relieving effect is 200 times stronger than the morphine. So, these neuropeptides have also been linked to all these activities such as improved memory and learning, feelings of pleasure, control of body temperature, regulation of hormones that affect the onset of puberty, sexual drive and reproduction. Also, mental illness such as depression and schizophrenia. So, for all these, these neuropeptides play a very important role. So, all it was taken up from these books. So, I use these references for my lecture, Principles of Anatomy and Physiology by the Gerard Tortora and Principles of Life by Hillis and et al. So, it was all about my topic that is neurotransmitters.